Beautiful love. Here in my home, my childhood home in St Ives, we are exhibiting my father's paintings, Robert Colwick, for the first time since he died in 2009. And we have a lovely body of work ranging from very, very old ones, which I'm familiar with from when I was very small, to all the way through his life really, because he exhibited in every exhibition in the Penworth Society of Arts in St Ives but most of his work he kept to himself. He painted for himself. And his great love was to put himself into his paintings. And he always said to us, if you want to know me, know my paintings. Yeah. And you have to take the time to just be with a painting for a while, and then it'll start to speak to you. So it's very spiritual, really. It, it is, and everyone is different. There are themes that run through them but everyone is very special and he, was, he also developed his painting techniques from the very, um, these ones with lots of texture and he still did the one like the moonlight one there with lots of texture but then he also developed the ability to make really subtle colours with very fine glazes of art of, of oil painting and you just have to stand and look at them and they're completely changed depending what um, light you get on them. So seeing these ones here in the dark with artificial light and this one's shining because it's shining from the door with gold on and things. It's, it's very, very few of his paintings had gold. And but if once you look you see it's gold, purple, black, dark, it's just the the subtle changes across it are fantastic. So what's this piece about? This one is a completely one-off one and he used to hang it in our living room for a long time and it evolved, I knew some of the involvement of it. He was experimenting with dribbles, which as you see, and this part here was a found object when polystyrene packaging was rare and he found a bit and he stuck it on because his friend Ken Rowett, who lived up in Leeds, used to do long paintings with bits stuck on like bits of wood and he used to exhibit with him at the Midland Art Group. So this piece of polystyrene was here for many years and then we came back from school one day and it was gone and he liked the effect where it was stuck on so now he's calling it Moon Fragment Falling which I yeah. think is very beautiful and I think at that time is when the square came as well. Can we go to the other studio? Yes. That's right. Yes, yes. Okay. It's a beautiful uh, view looking at, uh, out to sea. It brings it everything into perspective, doesn't it? It is. It's, um, it's, he did most of his paintings at night because it was quiet then. Yeah. And he liked the dark and the silence of the night. And the perfect so, sound of the sea. The sound of the sea and no people. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look at this one, once you know where he lived, this is the night sea, yeah. with the night waves in the night sea and surf over on the far side of Gwydion. Yeah. Or not, if you didn't know that, you'd still think it was the sea. I would anyway. So what other pieces stand out in your head in here? This one. <laughs> the most. This one, definitely. With the sound, with the background sound, it's uh, yeah. fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. But they, they're all... They're all, um, so it's so amazing to have so many out at once. He didn't like a lot of art at once. Yeah. But we've put a selection up. And it's very wonderful to be able to be with him. Is he from uh, St. Ives originally? No, we moved down in 1967. Which so, is a long time. So where, so where was he before? Based in Strawberry Hill. Yeah. In London. Okay. Not London. Strawberry Hill. <laughs> Strawberry Hill is always very insistent that it's brought together. Yeah. Are you an artist as well? I'm an artist. I take many photographs and the idea is yes we can do drawings and paintings but the life kind of gets in the way 
Yeah. And we've just started to experiment with clay, which is um, great fun. Uh -huh. So this is only three months' work, really. Okay. And it, again, they're developing. <laughs> so what's it like living in St. Ives? Living in St. Ives is a glorious place to live in. Yeah. It, for me, is wrecked by the numbers of people who fill it up. And yeah. don't to my mind, appreciate it in the same way as the people who originally came. Especially this year where it's been an overload. Oh. <laughs> but it's useful to be living here because we didn't have to be in the town. Yeah. And when I was younger, living here as a child, I used to rush off into the countryside, do bird watching, painting flowers, yeah. and then come back to tea. Well, I was brought up in the country in Cheshire, so I'm yeah. used to, I'm working on the farms, I used to run five miles to go and work on the uh, council farms and do the harvesting. So yeah. I used to be outside, one with the landscape all the time. I'm always outside, I mean, the colour of me. <laughs> yeah, same, same with me as well. <laughs> but so thanks a lot for your time, and it's great to, for you to show me uh, the exhibition. And to say him again, he's Robert Colwick. Yeah. Robert H. Colwick. OK. And um, he's a recluse and a very private and very... Experienced. He was. He's died. Yeah. He died in 2009. Yeah, so um, have you got a website for the gallery? Yeah. No, we haven't. Okay. So your um, film would be interesting. Yeah. To see. So if you send a link, that would be fantastic. Okay. St. Ives Art Week. Yes. Uh, and what's your name? My name's Sally McCabe. Shall I take my mask off? Oh, uh, yes, please. Sure, yeah. It's your studio. Right, thank you. It's your studio, so it's your choice. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it all gets very muffled. Yeah. Yes, um, I'm Sally McCabe, and this is my studio um, here in St. Ives. And um, it's actually been pretty good for me this year because I took the lease on for this during lockdown in February yeah. and so I had the luxury of a couple of months to get it really sorted out how I wanted it to be so I can work and paint up bits of furniture so everything's in my very much in my signature colour ways yeah. and since lockdown lifted it's been quite phenomenal in 20 years I've never known it be quite so busy with people actively coming in seeking wanting to buy original paintings and yeah. it's not just me it's been across the board as well and it's a bubble that will probably burst but um it's been a very busy year and so um which is quite inspiring it makes you want to keep painting to keep up with demand but also although the ideas that have sort of been backing up during lockdown and I couldn't really paint properly, um, now there's a reason to actually want to do that. So it's been very positive, it's been great. Um, where does your style come from? I come originally from Oxfordshire yeah. and we moved here to St Ives in 2000, so I've been here just over 20 years. Um, what, if it's not a silly question to ask, what were you going to say to St Ives? It was a complete fluke. Um, we lived in Woodstock in Oxfordshire, had done for 18 years. So you're quite bohemian then? 
Yeah, no, not that Woodstock. <laughs> that one's in America. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, common, common mistake. Um, no, we lived in Woodstock, Blenheim Palace. So, yeah. yeah. And um, my husband was retired unexpectedly, and we suddenly thought we could live wherever we liked, although we were very happy where we were. And although we'd been to St Ives for a day trip and seen it at its worst, the harbour, lots and lots of people, um, we had booked to come here on holiday just a couple of months after John had been retired on health grounds to stay in my friend's cottage. She just bought one here. So yeah. all the way down um, with our children and my mum, I'm saying, I know we're thinking of moving, but we don't know Cornwall, it's too cut off. There's no Ikea, as there wasn't in those days. Um, and it's we not so cut off, you've got the main line to London. That you've got runs. to have the priorities yeah. Yeah. But um, anyway, we came down for the week's holiday, yeah. not knowing it. Um, we went home with, we bought a house, and my mum had bought a house. Yeah. And we moved three months later. Nice one. So, um, unlike a lot of people I meet who say, oh, I've been coming since I was a child, I'd love to move here one day. We just moved on the spur of the moment, um, and we love it. And when did you define your style of art? I'm self-taught, largely. Yeah. So I always wanted to do art, but was told it wasn't a proper job under that generation. Yeah. Um, so my working life for a while when I was younger was I worked as a PA um, and had wonderful jobs working for Maverick people in London, New York and various places oh, right. and then came back to Oxfordshire to get married and um, was always starting really with textile work which is kind of where my roots were but over the years more and more paper came into it and paint yeah and when we moved here I decided I didn't need didn't feel any need for textiles anymore I just wanted to paint but there's always been a, a textured surface to my work it's a really great to style to your work isn't it there's a lot of texture in there a lot of ply papers I collect and forage all sorts of things which get can you show me something close up if that's all right yeah this Probably this is the, um, a really good example. This one round here. This is not in the blue greys, but this is grey is very much just my colour scheme. I a bit of with the camera. Um, okay. Now this painting is called My Inspiration because if it's all right to point, um, a piece of paper I've included, which is a piece of piano sheet music from which was my dad's. It's called My Inspiration. Yeah. And so I thought this is an excuse to actually put together a collection of things which I use a lot in my work or which sort of inspire me. So we've got rusty objects. We've got an old, very old penny. We've The main feature being this little book. And books and paper are so important to my work. I do book sculptures. I make books. So the book was, I was able to use. A vintage... Um, postcard from uh, which is Italian Venice appears in my work quite a lot and then elements of nature we've got honesty seeds we've got pebbles we've got bits of wood we've got vintage buttons linen buttons which hark back to my textile roots yeah um, and so it was put together as a compilation totally abstract but with lots of layered paint and papers um, and oh. so that very much sort of this is an interesting one Yes, now this... Um, is that supposed to look like a little run? It is, it's an old bobbin. And uh, the reason for this is that a couple of years ago, having not stitched for 20 years, I decided I wanted to do hand stitching again. And so this is a fusion it's of um, stitched with... Um, we've got some silk fabrics here, but we've also got paper, which has been um, applied to the surface. And it does actually roll onto this vintage bobbin which I bought. So it can be displayed either rolled up or it can be actually loosened down. And then with the cockle shells, which um, limpid shells rather, which um, we find on the beach here, it's I've done a, it's in three sections. So you have a canvas which has been painted more conventionally yeah. and the printing box at the top. A nice one. Yeah. Which is two dimensional um, art. Yeah. Yeah. So how long did it take you to uh, define your style? Um, it's kind of, I don't know, I think it's always been there and it just changes. Um, sometimes I want to work on a theme like Venice, sometimes I'm doing stylized flowers, sometimes it's purely abstract using materials as, as they sort of speak to me as I'm doing it. Um, 
but texture's always been important to me and also this colour palette and people think oh it's some times it's the blues the greys but when I was a child living in Oxfordshire which is as landlocked as you can get I remember being taken to the knitting shop to choose some yarn to be taught to do crochet and of all this wonderful array of colours I chose a blue grey ball of wool and it's always been my favourite colour palette. Um, luckily now I live in St Ives and yeah it very much reflects what people see. But, uh, How long have you had this studio in St Ives? Uh, this studio I've had since February, yeah. um, taken on the lease. Um, before that for eight years I was part of a collective just around the corner here, Back Road Artworks. Yeah. And before that we lived in a large house when we first moved here overlooking Portsminster Beach and after a few years we actually converted the ground floor room to my studio gallery like this where I could open it to the public. So what inspired, which areas of Venice oh, inspire you? I, it's the architecture. Yeah. I, I love buildings. I either love very modern contemporary buildings or I love gothic and old and, and Venice just to me would be my chosen second home. Yeah. Like many people. <laughs> but um, yeah. I just, just love Venice and so I actually plan over this winter to do, a, uh, when things calm down, yeah. uh, to do a series of work again which is going to be based on Venice, the buildings, the arched windows. The Did you used to wear a mask texture. when you walked around Venice? I haven't been there for three years so yeah, right. at that point we didn't. Oh you mean uh, the, yeah. the festival master? No, no. <laughs> I done, did that four years ago. Did you? I did, yeah. It's so you were there actually, it's in oh, February, I recorded isn't it? it? Yeah, it is, yes. yeah. It's, it's like... actually my, when my birthday is and right. we kind of avoided going during festival because I like um, I like to go to places when there aren't too many, I, I get really, really ratty when there's too many people about. I like it when it's quiet. Well, I think that's the idea actually to break up the winters to bring people in yes. two winters because Nice is the same yes they have the carnival of flowers in February around the same time yes and it's just a blaze you know yeah. a blaze of colour yeah I've seen yeah. It. but Venice is lovely at any time of year I just just love it yeah yeah yeah. Well, thanks a lot for your time. How can people contact you? Uh, I have a website. Yeah. Um, Sally McCabe, spelt M A double C A B E, sallymccabe.co.uk. And I also have a good presence on Instagram. Just Google me and everything comes up. Okay, thanks a lot for your time. You're welcome. So it's a beautiful day in St. It's a beautiful day in St. Ives, and I'm now meeting Rachel Cantaris for the first time. Hello, Rachel. Hello. <laughs> How long have you had your gallery here? Uh, studio. <laughs> so, sorry, your studio, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I don't normally open to the um, public, so that's the difference with the gallery and the studio. So oh, right, okay. today's a, a, an unusual day because it's open studios, which only happens once a year. Yeah. Um, I've been here for about... Um, Can I just go around the other side because I'm getting you in silhouette because of the lighting? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I've been here for about um, six or seven years, this one, but I've been studio hopping a lot, so I have a lot of... Um, experience of different different studios so yeah. so how long have you been in St Ives? Um, St Ives I've um, I was brought up actually on the south coast of Cornwall and then um, I came back about 20 odd years ago actually to, and, and to St Ives which is off on the north coast yeah so so my, both my parents live in Cornwall so um, yeah so it's got the, so the southwest the south and the west coast have got uh, a great history in art, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, this studio itself, um, several quite well-known artists have had this studio or the one opposite. Um, I run the printmaking workshop around the corner above the Penwith Gallery and so many famous artists have worked there. Peter Lanyon used to run it as a school of painting um, and um, Wilhelmina Barnes Graham, other very famous artists have worked there, Terry Frost and Patrick Heron and yeah, everywhere you go. I recognise one of those famous yeah, names. Yeah, one of them, yeah. <laughs> if I just keep rambling on, you'll probably notice like, one, of, one of the names. But yeah, they're all, they're all you know, well known, uh, all dead unfortunately, but very recent St Ives history, but they're the, um, the ones that really brought St Ives to the forefront of the art scene, really. So, so how long have you been working in art? All my life, actually. I, I did my degree in, um, in, in art, and then I did a master's degree in printmaking, um, which is what I do, etching, and I run the print workshop, so, um, and also painting. So yeah, all my life, really, ever since I could first pick up a paintbrush, I've been painting and 
making art. So. In the digital world, printing's taking off again, isn't it? Um, yes, yes, but the kind of printmaking I do, I don't know if you want to show the etchings, but they're handmade etchings, yeah. so it's, it, they're nothing. Can, we, uh, nothing uh, can you take us to the etchings then? Okay. See what the lighting yeah. does okay. in here yeah. at the same time. Yeah, there's some random... Oops. Oh, sorry. No, it's <laughs> my fault. Oh, it's your what? Yeah, you this, uh, all the glazed work is actually um, etching, which I haven't got any etching plates here, but they're um, three three plates uh -huh. um, that are inked up and then printed onto um, paper one after another, onto cotton paper. Yeah. And that one's got Japanese paper in it as well, embossed in. It's a very, sort of, very, very laborious hand made process nothing to do with photographic so print making and printing completely different yeah so it's just another way of getting paper paint onto the paper so uh -huh. yeah. yeah it's very and uh, there's a little etching press there actually so you can sort of see this is a little monoprint um but yeah this is a like the yeah thank you yeah <laughs> It's a little monoprint. Um, Bit of silver. Yeah. <laughs> and then the paintings are on, on camera. So this is actually my painting studio. Yeah. So it's a really nice process for colour. And smooth. It's quite abstract, isn't it? Yeah. yeah well, I, I yes. Yeah. Apart from the figures that have see, crept in recently and these ones, which aren't quite finished, I usually work very much in abstract. It's very much about colour. Yeah. Um, for me. And printmaking lends itself to that. Layers of different different colors and you can just there's a whole language to it it's 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 endless and um, yeah so how did you get into it. printmaking um, on my second year of my degree I discovered the printmaking department which in Brighton at the art school was on the top floor it was very sociable next to the cafe it's probably why I sort of initially <laughs> went there beautiful view right over the sea from up there and I just loved it I just really loved it it's like being a sculptor when you're working with the metal plates very open it's city like, as well now yeah yeah which was a town in those days yeah Brighton. yeah it was well it, it, it was just the right size I think busy and you know mm. vibrant and um, I was also doing performance I was doing dance as well so um, I was doing visual and performing art so um, the Brighton Festival was really you know very vibrant thing to be you know not involved in but yeah it was just a lovely place to study yeah but printmaking I just love it because it's very very sculptural yeah. and as I say it really is fantastic if you're a colorist yeah um, so yeah and then I paint as well I've always painted alongside it but I feel that I'm an etcher really or a printmaker first and foremost uh -huh. so yeah that's uh, nice <laughs> thanks a lot for your time
Share the love at Summertime TV Worldwide on YouTube. You've got to be a CCS1 at gmail.com. Don't forget to share the video. It's 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 it's